Now, the massive explosion which devastated a large swathe of the Lebanese capital Beirut sent shockwaves through the world. But could such a tragedy ever happen here? The SS Richard Montgomery ran aground and sank just off Sheerness back in 1944. And as our chief correspondent Alex Thompson has been finding out, the ship's wreck still contains thousands of tons of explosive ordnance. Dawn on the Thames estuary, and we're on a sightseeing trip to one of Britain's most offbeat tourist attractions. Current position, roughly one mile north of Sheerness. It's an attraction with the potential to devastate the entire area. Piercing the surface at low tide, three rusting masts of the notorious local shipwreck, SS Richard Montgomery. What have we got on board there, Tim, that's dangerous? Well, we've got 3,632 tonnes of ordnance and bombs on there, stored on there. Now, that's according to the Maritime Coast Guard Agency official list. Now, that contains 1,400, a total of 1,400 tonnes of TNT. What lurks beneath? This 3D sonar image clearly shows the state of the smashed vessel. Her back broken, her holds exposed. Inside, the silent, deadly, undelivered cargo. And the experts say this explosive is still viable. They still present an explosive hazard. The TNT itself is quite a stable composition. And given the uh, low temperatures that it's being stored in underwater, that means in a way there shouldn't have been much deterioration of the composition of the explosives uh, and these aircraft bombs. If this cargo detonates, the worst case scenario could devastate both Sheerness and South End, destroy the nearby gas storage facility and send a tsunami barreling up the River Thames towards London. The SS Richard Montgomery was a Liberty ship, one of over a thousand cavernous freighters mass-produced by the Americans for World War II. Dunnage to replace lost ships. Dunnage to bring us food and the weapons of war. This footage shows another Liberty ship taking a direct hit. The huge blast, testimony to the vast quantities of explosives such vessels transported. In 1944, the SS Richard Montgomery arrived safely in the Thames estuary, crammed with a variety of bombs, including fused cluster munitions. But then she grounded on a sandbank and began to break up. About half her deadly cargo was recovered, but 1,400 tons of high-explosive TNT remain on board to this day. Talk to local fishermen, and there are many who speak of catching bombs like they catch cod. So much so, they routinely dispose of the bombs in their own way, regardless of the rule book. So probably every five or six hours we'd have ordnance of some sort. Well, you'd, you'd have a bomb in your net every five or six hours. At least one, yeah, sometimes more. So you just go to a known spot and heave them over the rail. Right, you literally pick the bomb up on the deck, presumably a couple of guys because they're quite heavy, and throw it over the side. In a nutshell. Anything from 30 to around 60 kilos is the average size in that area. Bigger ones further down the estuary. The liquid natural gas terminal right next to the wreck on the Isle of Grange includes these three gas storage tanks, each one bigger than the Royal Albert Hall. All of it serviced by tankers in a shipping lane just 200 metres from the wreck. I've got big objections to who signed off for 100,000 tonnes of liquid natural gas to be passing within 200 metres of one of the biggest bomb wrecks in the world. And that channel has been dredged to oblivion to accommodate the tankers, which is why part of the wreck is now falling into the channel. And yet, the SS Richard Montgomery is a much-loved part of the landscape in Sheerness. There's a special viewing telescope on the beachfront. An ode to the wreck on the sea wall. And this, the Sheerness Mermaid. You know, there's the Taj Mahal, there's the Grand Canyon, there's St. Peter's Square. 
And that's the mermaid. Disaster and risk management researcher Anna Gunderson has been surveying local attitudes. It's basically a 50-50% divide of people who want it to stay and remain the way it is and others who want something to be done about it. How many people did you find who actually said, get rid of the whole damn thing? Very few. I think that was about 6% that said they wanted it to be completely gone. After 76 years of pondering, the government's decided to remove the ship's masts to stop them crashing through the rusting superstructure, sending cluster bombs cascading onto the TNT, potentially triggering a massive explosion. What we have on our hands is really an intractable problem because we don't know how many bombs are there. We don't know what state they're in. Neither do we know what would be the actual trigger event, nor when it will happen. We asked the Coast Guard and Marine Agency about the wreck. They passed us on to the Department of Transport. They issued this statement. We continue to monitor the wreck closely and as part of the prudent risk management, we're exploring the potential to reduce the height of the masts. National Grid, who run the liquid natural gas terminal on the Isle of Grain, told us... Safety at National Grid Grain LNG is our highest priority. The terminal was built with due consideration to all local, ecological, environmental and safety factors. But all interested parties know that the one main risk assessment carried out on SS Richard Montgomery concluded one thing. We don't know enough about her. She's un-risk accessible. Alex Thompson, Channel 4 News in the Thames Estuary.